the Elk River Railroad. I'm Norman Lundeen and this is my wife Ann. Together we have spent the last 25 years building and expanding our hobby from a small layout for the 1995 National NMRA Convention in Atlanta, enlarging it again for the 2013 National NMRA Convention, and with one section still to be completed, which is Gold Beach, it now takes up virtually the whole basement area of approximately 25 feet by 44 feet. The railroad is located in the Cascade Mountain region of Oregon, from the port city of Coos Bay to the staging yards of Grants Pass. It then continues off-site to Portland. As the West Coast is noted for the vastness of its forests and the quality of its timber, I, as our Vice President of Forest Products and Real Estate, have been in charge of making and installing trees, constructing small kit buildings, and filling in the scenery areas. I have presented hands-on tree-making clinics at our national convention. The Elk River is a modern logging and industrial railroad as a fictional branch of the Burlington Northern Railroad in the 1995 to present era. This map shows the whole route of the Elk River Railroad, the main line and the two branch lines. One branch leaves Pistol Cove and ends in the coastal village of Gold Beach with its fishing village and salmon canning factory. The second branch climbs out of Windy Hollow up to Eagle's Nest and onto the lumber sorting yard at Camp 6. Our tour will take us on a local Amtrak train leaving Coos Bay Station and heading into the Cascade Mountains. We'll view the forest product industries and the industrial companies that require unit trains of intermodal cars, lumber, coal, grain, sand, minerals, and seafood. We're waiting for the Burlington Northern Portland to Coos Bay intermodal train to clear the main so that we can depart north. We leave Coos Bay Station and pass by the railroad's refueling, minor repair, and engine staging areas. Engines are turned at the small turntable to head back towards Grants Pass or Portland. We passed the Cascade Lumber Company, Mill Number 4. This is a large complex kit and all the buildings and their interiors have not been completed yet. The mill processes logs from Camp 6 into dimensional lumber for the construction industry in the northwest and beyond. The mill requires a dedicated BN switcher to handle all the train loading requirements for its yard trackage. As we begin gain speed, we pass by the village of Port Ord and its waterfront cannery and boat repair shops. This is the Coast Guard station and the cannery at Port Ord Harbor.
We are approaching the town of Pistol Cove and its station. The pier side of Pistol Cove handles petroleum products for shipments by rail to small companies along the railroad. The Quincy facility handles bulk heating fuel and diesel oil from barges and its landside tanks. It also handles propane tanks in bulk for several industries. The <clears throat> SD40-2s have been refueled in Pistol Cove and are now attached to the empty Unicoal train that will be heading down to the Potter River Basin in Wyoming. This is some of the characteristics of Pistol Cove and its main staging areas for uh, Amtrak train, uh, which our local has now pulled into the station, and the power company, uh, which gets unit trains of coal that come in and be uh, loaded in and the empties coming out. We also have <clears throat> the uh, Pacific Cascade uh, lumber, co lumber Company, which makes plywood, uh, which has another one of the major industries. This is the Pacific Northwest uh, Power Company, which provides electricity to the whole area. This shows the cars being loaded into the building and some of the track that now goes over to uh, Gold Beach. This shows you the um, rail yard and the valley uh, that goes up into the helix. On top is the paper company, which is located in Lorieville. Uh, which takes some of the other minor uh, uh, trees from the Camp 6 area into the Champion Paper Company and takes uh, loaded chips from the lumber company at mill number 4. Amtrak local is now waiting for a empty coal train to come down from Wendy Hollow as it passes down through the helix and we'll see the interior of the helix as the train passes down the 2% grade. Uh, you'll also see some of the electronics that uh, make up the digital Digitrax uh, system. I want to highlight two of the um, latest engines we have from scale trains. These SD40-2s are incredible engines. We have everything from uh, Cato to uh, Atlas to, um, well, almost every one of the major engines. We have over 100 engines on our layout and uh, 350 cars. Uh, we can't put all of that on the railroad at one time. We have about 20 engines and about uh, 100 cars uh, because of not having enough sidings. But these engines are just absolutely incredible. Our Amtrak local is now leaving Pistol Cove Station and heading into the tunnel that will take it through the helix and up into the town of Windy Hollow, where we will stop at the museum and uh, get a chance to let the passengers off and enjoy an hour's stay at the, at the uh, railroad museum. Our train is coming through the tunnel, coming out of the helix, and approaching the town of Wendy Hollow. The train will pull into a siding and let the passengers off, and we'll get a tour of the museum, see some of the steam engines, 
We have a variety of steam engines. Some of them are ones that Ann and I have rid behind uh, on uh, tours uh, through the um, railroad adventures that um, have run. We've run behind this uh, Reading from the Reading Rambles um, through to um, going up to Cheyenne and working with Steve Lee up there uh, several times when we were stationed in, in Colorado so that we know the, the Challenger and the, the great uh, the Northern engine very well. We've been in the cabs of both of those. This shows you where we have a lot of steam engines but we're modern diesels so we have a museum which then uh, has all the engines and we've provided a full loading facility here for uh, diesel and steam loading and fueling and also for sanding. So it's a complete facility um, as you'll see. This is some of the town of, of um, Wendy Hollow and out of the north end of the Wendy Hollow is the branch line starts that goes up to Lauderville to the plant, uh, the paper plant and also on to uh, Eagles Pass and up to Camp 6. Uh, this is the main line, main street of um, Wendy Hollow, but all the cars aren't all there. This is the staging area of Grants Pass. Uh, it's six uh, tracks. Uh, they are, we'll need to have a, a mirror up above because we can't see over the scenery to see down into the track to see them coupled to. Now we're leaving out of, the train is leaving out of uh, Wendy Hollow and heading up towards North Parent uh, where we will see the Campbell's uh, Soup Factory which was uh, when the fellow uh, Mr. Campbell died we were disassembling his uh, railroad for his wife and she wanted us to have this and memorialize it on our layout as the Campbell factory. He actually, his name was Campbell and he lived right next to where this factory was. So it's a, an accurate reproduction of the building that, that Campbell Soup had in his town. This, uh, where you see the, the ore cars, this is where the flour comes in and gets, uh, the grain comes in from Nebraska and unit trains and part of it goes down to the Cargill factory which ships out at at uh, Coos Bay. Here we're waiting for the clearance of the Empire Builder as she's coming through town. Uh, Ann and I took a train trip around the country on this particular Empire Builder uh, from Atlanta all the way around the country and then back, a 17-day trip. And so we've memorialized that train as part of our features on our railroad. This is Camp 6. Uh, this is where the logs are cut off sites and brought in and sorted into the three different categories. One for building materials for camp uh, for uh, mill number four, plywood for the plywood factory, and then the other logs for the Champion Paper uh, Company along with chips coming out of uh, the mill. This is one of our favorite little spots because it is so uh, intricately designed with log cars and loaders and uh, we get a lot of people looking at this area and saying, wow, that's really neat. So we're very proud of that area. This is Eagle's Nest. It's a, was a a uh, vast mining company, as you can see, the mine, the mill is still there. Uh, we go down and take these uh, cars, these uh, loaded cars, down to <clears throat> Gold Beach, where there's a smelter down there. And uh, then the rest of it is now used as a uh, town for tourists. And we do have a train that leads out of Coos Bay and stops at various stations along the way and makes its way up to the station here in Eagle's Nest. Uh, we do also have a uh, telephone pole processing plant uh, and you'll, you'll see large uh, unit trains of telephone poles leaving out of here and heading down towards uh, Coos Bay.
these are some of the new houses that are being built up here as some of the tourists uh, have decided to stay and form uh, little small cottage industries to serve the tourist trade. This will show you that the railroad is actually three levels high. It's got 36 down at uh, Port Ord, goes up to 54 up here uh, with trains coming out of the tunnel and then up to, to elevation 62 at uh, the elevation where the, the mine is and the uh, town of Eagle Nest is. This is the, uh, the local uh, unit train that's coming out of the Vulcan pit, which we didn't show photographically here. It's, it's a completed section on the other side, but we didn't have enough time to put all of that in. And uh, she's running down to Coos Bay to be uh, processed and then put onto barges. Coos Bay is known for the quality of the sand, for sand castings and glass. And so there's a big operation here to bring all of that fine sand down to Coos Bay. This is our Digitech control panel. Um, as you can see, uh, there's quite a bit of uh, electronics in order to run this railroad. 